Hey guys, welcome to Contents Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with a special guest, Tracy Canfield. Welcome, Tracy. Hi. I wanted to have Tracy on because she owns a company called Med3 Fitness, which I, I love the alliteration to this, or, or I, I should say the, the acronym. Uh, that's kind of a double entendre. And also because you represent, Tracy, I think what a, a huge amount of people need to hear in this industry, which is as a coach, it's never easy. Nobody just walks in and says, hey, I'm going to be a coach. And all of a sudden, you're, you're at the top of your game making a career out of it. It takes work and it takes a lot of skill. It, it takes understanding that you have to balance uh, an awful lot to get there. It doesn't happen overnight. And the reason I'm setting you up like this is because I know that you are a mother of how many children? Uh, I have two of my own and two stepchildren, so four teenagers. Okay, and I know what that's like. I have four kids and, and I only have one teenager left. So that 20 years, that was, the, that was the busiest, hardest time to work in a business that I could imagine. But you also work full time as a data analyst, which means you're a genius. You're, you're doing <laughs> high level stuff in the business world. Is, is that right? Yeah, I, uh, I work for a healthcare organization, so um, just transitioned into a role of a scrum master. Um, not a lot of people know what that is, but it's basically um, someone who manages teams um, to produce uh, complex solutions for your organization. So I manage a lot of different teams that do a lot of data processing um, between the healthcare and the IT solutions. Okay, so, so besides being a mother of four teenagers, you, you have this incredibly high-level, complicated job in the business world, and you've also shown up to assist a lot of people in this industry almost just as a volunteer. I, I know you were heavily involved with the, the organization, If It Fits Your Macros, literally just facilitating, monitoring information. You still do this. There's been a change of ownership. But you are there helping people just become healthier because you want to see them do that. You're, you're helping other coaches. You're, you're doing so much. And, and, and this is what I want to focus on. You also have a passion for a specific kind of client because you know there are people trying to do the same thing you're doing, trying to manage all of those facets of life and still build a career that you want, that you can enjoy. Yes, definitely. I mean, like everybody's got a everything going on and it's always uh, a challenge to find all the time to do everything but you're right I do have a passion for fitness and nutrition um, and at the end of the day I just like helping people I mean like we're I think that there's a lot of information out there and for you know a general population they don't always know how to weed through all of some of the nonsense that's out there um, so if I can be a voice of just being you know everyday mom and um, reach out to uh, you know anybody that needs help and guide them uh, you know that makes me happy to be able to help yeah, and, and, and you said that perfectly. I mean, th this is a particular week, kind of on the, I, I hope, what's the back end of a pandemic. Now we're in the, the middle of these race riots, you know, happening, and we're, we're recording this, you know, in, in the week that, that George Floyd was, was murdered and, and all that's happening. And so one of the posts, I, I will maybe once a week or so post something that's socially relevant. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of put my day job to the side for the weekends and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post something in social media that's a little bit more meaningful, a little deeper, a little bit more personal. And, and the one thing that I had to do this weekend, what I felt compelled to do, is just address all the misinformation. I mean, we politicized a global health crisis. Now we're politicizing the death of this man. And it's just, you know, one fake meme after another, fake headlines, fake everything. So to your point in the nutrition world, I mean, when I started out 25, 27 years ago, I thought the same thing, Tracy. I thought, you know, there is a lot of misinformation out here. There are so many things that people don't know. I need to be a voice of clarity. It's way harder now than it was back then because of how fast information is rolling through the, the, the culture. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I mean, like, I was very fortunate that when I started getting into fitness and nutrition, um, that I found Eric Helms as one of my first resources, um, uh, the muscle and strength pyramids on the YouTube and stuff. And so I think that that set me up very well for finding 
the right resources to follow and the right path to take. But not everybody has the passion for fitness and nutrition to know which direction to go. And I, I will say that I had some places where, you know, I wasn't always on track and everything with finding that. And, you know, I was one of those people that fell under the idea of, um, being able to do one thing versus the other, I struggled with, hey, I want to lose weight and build muscle at the same time. And, and you know what, the clean eating is the only way to go. So, you know, I've transitioned over the years. And, you know, as a, when I first started out coaching, you know, um, with not as much experience, it was like, I train you the way I train, and I was a competitor. So that's how I trained. And so people coming to me, I would be like, this is the only way to do it. And now I have more of an open mindset about we find what's best for you as an individual and um i think a lot of people that get into the coaching um when you talk to them you'll find out that they do coach their clients the way that they are coached rather than finding what is the right thing for that individual so i think that you have to tailor that because we're all unique in different ways um and we can't just have like this mindset that there's only one way to do it. Um, you understand that being, you know, a, a physique a prep coach and stuff that everybody is absolutely unique in their um, way that their body responds to different protocols. Yeah, you brought up a huge point, which is to, to find those resources that, that you can trust. And, you know, you mentioned Eric Helms, who's a great friend of mine. And uh, I, I'm sure through him, you, you are introduced to another person, another person, another person. You learn to understand how to interpret science and research a little bit. And even beyond that, just, just to kind of look at everything with that little bit of skepticism. I've, I've got two little stories I'm going to link together because of, of your prompt there. Uh, I, I just relearned. I had heard this a while ago and forgot about it. That in Scandinavia, the Scandinavian countries, and in most of Europe, by the time you're in the first grade, just your, your kind of entry into school as a young child, the first thing they teach you is how to not trust anything that you read on the internet, how you oh, have to instantly yeah. fact check it, verify it, because there's so much propaganda, you know, pumped into, you know, their, their cultures specifically, but obviously everywhere. So anyway, I'm, I'm laying in bed last night next to my wife. I'm, I'm reading something. She's on her phone and she's reading some stuff too. She, she, she gets to this supplement and says, Hey, have you heard of this? It's supposed to help you burn body fat while you're asleep, give you a better night's sleep. It's got, it's by this doctor who's this and this. And I'm like, in my, you know, I immediately just feel like I got punched in the chest. I'm like, please don't tell me I'm going to have to sift through this and, and explain this. Uh, but of course it was a quote doctor that you would never hear of. It was all the things you would think. It's this miracle amino acid called tryptophan that helps you sleep. Oh. <laughs> it has melatonin that helps you sleep. And it has arginine, which helps you build muscle and, and lose body fat while you sleep. All of the things which I said, if you just did a cursory little review in PubMed or Google Scholar, you would find that all of that crap is 20, 30 years old, and it's completely not true, and it's completely not going to work. But yeah. it, it's, it's the headline, and it's that clickbait, and it's because we believe what we want to believe. So, so your entire position of just trying to help people understand how to get the work done, because I think you're right. Most people hire coaches now in multiple categories, multiple industries, just because of this, because they have to finally figure out what's true and what's not. And I need you to help me apply it to me. So in, in Med3 Fitness, t tell me what the, the MED stands for. So um, I have two meetings for it. So med, since I have worked in the health care organization, is, you know, minimum effective dose. So my biggest thing is when I'm working with clients, I'm like, okay, what's the smallest thing that you can do to get one step closer to your goals? Because I believe that those small things lay a foundation to create big momentum. Um, so that was my first perspective. But really, for me, I think that there are three main things that are very important about reaching your goals. And since I work with a good population of people that are trying to do weight loss, MED stands for mindset, 
uh, exercise and diet. So the three tenets of my company is looking at those things because if your mindset is not there, it doesn't matter what your nutrition looks like. It doesn't matter what your exercise looks like because you need that mindset to have that positive outlook that you're going to be able to reach those goals. A lot of people that don't have those things in place will fall back into their old patterns. So I really try to work with my clients in saying, what are some of the things that have got you to the place where you are today? You know, whether it's past trauma, things like that. I'm not a counselor, but I can advise on things that they can do like journaling, gratitude lists, making sure they're doing self-care things to try to help them really address some of the underlying issues that have got them to a place where they need to lose weight and they can't sustain it. So I really focus a lot on how do we get your mindset in place because I truly believe that you can lose weight. I mean, losing weight is super easy. I mean, like anybody can do it in a calorie deficiency, but What happens is you get to that weight loss, but if your mind has not caught up to there or your lifestyle has not caught up to there and where your changes is, that's why we see all these people going back and gaining on the weight because they just didn't take the time to do those things along the way as well. Um, So I really like to focus on the, the three different areas that we can improve our lives because, you know, yes, you can clean up your diet. Great. But then what about exercise? You need to like exercise to be healthy overall. I mean, you know, walking and what have you. Um, And so I try to focus on what are the smallest things that you can do? Because I really believe that you know, you might, it might be as simple as adding an apple into your lunch every day. And hey, now I'm eating well, and oh, that makes me feel good. And oh, I want to do more and more and more. So that builds on to, you know, the foundation that they're laying with um, just making small changes, because a lot of diets are like, let's change everything. And I'm like, no, let's just start where you're at. Like if we start where you're at, we understand of where you're at, then let's make small changes to get you closer to where your goals are. Yeah. So, so first of all, I have to congratulate you because um, I'm I'm being interviewed a week from now on a healthcare podcast on the, the topic of branding, and and I wanna I want to congratulate you and explain to other coaches who are watching how effective it is to communicate a simple but powerful message to your clients when somebody sees MED minimum effective dose. You know, instantly that's that's new. That's not cliche. You know, everybody has their names and it's always, you know, the best this, American Tree Service and Pinnacle this and, you know, real results for real people. They're all these, you know, like just cliche things. But when they say, wow, what does that mean? Minimum effective dose. And then they understand the medical concept of you're going to get the minimum amount of work. You, I'm, I'm just asking you to take that one small step to get the biggest step forward, like, like gears, you know, the small gears that turn on a massive machine. That's powerful. And, and I think that's going to help your clients really understand that process. I, I was part here at Evansville, Indiana of a nonprofit that I think we got like a, a 30 million or so grant uh, from, from the government to, to implement wellness into our community. And that was the entire concept was just teach people to take that next step. You know, can you, can you drink an extra glass of water today? Can you take the stairs instead of the, the elevator? And it's and, and all over town. I mean, placards and schools and on, you know, the concrete downtown everywhere. It's just, it's all about that next step, that next step, that next step. So, so I just, I just think that's amazing. And, and I would love you to, to expand just a little bit about mindset. If, if I was a client and I said, Tracy, um, how do I know if I've got it? Like I, I have this goal. I, I feel motivated to reach this goal, but I, I have lost before and regained it. I have, you know, exercised or trained a little bit more aggressively at some points in my life. And then I kind of regress. So, so how do I make sure I have this mindset you're talking about? So as part of my check-in process with my clients, I have three specific questions on a form that they give me feedback on. And each week they choose a mindset goal, an exercise goal, and a diet goal. And so with mindset, 
we focus on things like um, having an I will do attitude versus an I will try attitude, um, focusing on the journey and not the destination. So I set them, so, them up for like different things that they can work on. And then we talk about different things that they can do to um, expand that mindset and getting in the right place. So if they're, you know, if they check in and they've chosen that they're going to be working on the I will uh, do parameter versus the I will try, I support that. I'm like, that's fantastic because when we say we'll try, that means we're going to give ourselves an excuse not to do what we want to do. But I will do means we've got a plan. That means we're going to take an action on making uh, changes to get to our goal. So I'm always being supportive of what those are and giving them resources to help change that mindset. So if a client's checking in and they're very negative in their check-ins, they don't believe in themselves, then I might be like, okay, well, let's focus on some positive affirmations. Because I think that while in the fitness and nutrition industry, we really focus on fitness and nutrition, we understand that mindset is very important to that. And so we really need to be doing some of those self-care things. Um, as a mother, I you know, give and serve everyone around me first. Um, and since most of the people that I work with are females, I totally understand that perspective of we serve others and we don't take care of ourselves. And so sometimes it's like, okay, understand that you are just as important. When you have these negative thoughts about yourself, think of how someone else in your life, if they told you those things, how you would feel about how they uh, talk about themselves. And so I'm like, let's work on some positive affirmations that put you in a positive mindset. Because if you wake up every morning going, yes, I got this, then you're going to be successful. If you're like, nope, this ain't going to work, then you're going to make choices that don't support getting you to your goal. And chances are pretty good you're going to fall off because you don't feel like you are going to be able to make those goals. You know, I was just speaking to a client about the fact that many of us who have dieted as kind of a career, you know, you and I have competed. I was a pro for almost 20 years. And so you're, you're constantly, you know, kind of gaining a little bit in the off season, then you're dieting, gaining, dieting. And, you know, whether, whether you're doing that in a healthy way or not, it still becomes somewhat routine. But all of us have stories of times when it was just super easy. It clicked. It was just like done. I was so, you know, motivated intrinsically, something inside me just made it simple. Other times it's a grind and it's horrible and you're struggling the whole way and you just like, why can't I do this? Uh, it, in terms of just kind of values or maybe it is just the context of the time of your life, you know, what, what do you do to help clients figure out like how to get through those struggles? Well, I think that um, we have to look on the the positive of like what we're going to do, you know, and and really I, I still fall back onto that minimum effective dose, you know, of, you know what, I know you have a lot of difficulties that are going on and stuff. There's a lot of stress, like everybody's under a lot of stress. But I'm like, let's just do one thing. Like, what was the one thing that you can do? And I think if you support people um, and what their goals are and you help them see the positive, um, I think that that helps them get, a, get over the hump sometimes. And, you know, I, I understand that the perspective of some people is they're not how I am. Like, um, I recently talked to some clients about how do you deal with um, getting fed by family members? and you don't want to offend them and I'm like just tell them look this is what I'm doing and they're like but not everybody does that I go I totally got that so I'm like hey if here somebody feeds you go hey that's a fantastic uh food can I get the recipe for that you you give them like a positive outlook and you get the information so you could track your own food so then it doesn't become stress or anything like that so you know, it really depends on where the person is struggling. I try to always make tools available because I think that, you know, with everything, you just have a toolkit. What tool do I need to bring out at the right time? Um, so for me, I'm in competition prep. And so one of the tools I always bring out as part of my prep is intermittent fasting. Because when you get low in calories, you want to have bigger meals. And so I'll implement it intermittent fasting um, to be able to manage my calories. So I think we just look out where are you at and what are the tools that you can actually incorporate um, to, to be successful. So 
I've had people going through changes of, you know, losing a lot of weight and they'll be used to these habits of like, I'm going to go out to eat because I'm going home and I'm going to try all these foods and I'm used to eating. I'm like, what if we just don't this time? What if you like choose one restaurant rather than five restaurants? And like, what if you don't? And so just giving them ideas on how to make those changes um, that support their lifestyle because you don't always know all of the information. You get bits and pieces and you got to try to read through that. And so I think that one of the things that over the last few years that I've really been focusing on is like the motivational interviewing. And um, a big thing is listen more, talk less, because we can really find out more information about um, the people we work with if we just listen to what they have to say, because they're not always going to give you all the information um, right up front. Yeah, and that's that's well said to to put that mindset component right in the middle of the training and the uh, the diet itself because there 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 is a lot of physiology to to understand and a lot of people coming to us for coaching just don't get it that you know hey if you choose this meal instead of this if you do this instead of this if you as you suggested even work on meal planning maybe you need larger meals with a more time in between. These are tangible tactics that people need to understand. So, so med three mindset, exercise, and diet, you know, that, uh, that mindset component has to be the foundation. I totally agree with you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that fits first in your, your acronym. And then, um, you know, that, that just dovetails right into the physiology of everything else. And, you know, I, I know you to be a super giver. You're incredibly generous with your time. Uh, I, I know you go overboard for your clients. Do you have a, a particular passion for a type of client, a, a demographic, somebody that you, a population you really like to work with? Um, I typically work with women that are like me. So I'm 46 and just went through perimenopause. And um, I am thrilled that I have gotten to the place where I am today because if you would work with me uh, like six years ago, I wouldn't be the same person I am today. Because I have a high level perspective of being part of a community of bodybuilders, prepping for shows and things like that, I have a good understanding of like what happens with the scale, weight, things like that. And I think for most people, they have really have this emotional attachment to the scale and what the number says. And I have no attachment. I don't care if I'm, you know, 20 pounds over for, you know, building, 20 pounds under for um, prep for a show. Like the scale doesn't bother me. I'm comfortable in the way my body looks no matter what. So I think that that's a good mindset to have, but not everybody has that mindset. Um, so for me, last year when I tried to go into prep and struggled because I was going through changes of life, that really gave me a good perspective of what the women that are like me, and that's you know basically where I'm working at is a lot of my clients are between 30 and 50, and we're going through these different um, changes of life and really having an understanding of like what they're going through. And then of course, being in prep now and seeing what my body looks like now versus what it looked like six years ago and the leanness and the weight and stuff and going, well, that's different. Um, and I, you know, from the perspective of not being all that concerned about, you know, what my body looks like or anything like that, then I can be objective about the information. You know, I can be like, oh, look, I got loose skin. I'm not trying to say that's a bad thing or something. I'm just saying, hey, now as you reach to a certain age, these are the things that you can happen. Um, and then, you know, just being able to say, oh, I see that you're probably going through changes. Here are some things that you might want to be aware of and how to guide that. So really a lot of the people that I'm working with are females. Um, I really enjoy helping them because of the fact that, you know, uh, like I said, as a mom, you know, I understand that we give, give, give to those around us. And sometimes we forget about taking care of ourselves. Um, and I think that that makes me a good coach to have that compassion and understanding about what people are going through um, in those situations. I think that is so perfectly said. I was just this morning listening to a podcast and this, this guy was talking about the different ways inside of personality psychology that we get to express ourselves in different relationships. So 
I know personally as a coach who's been doing this now for almost 30 years, I, I'm surprised that I still have so many young people who come to me uh, and, and I've realized they, they look at me as this, this role model, this authority figure, and, and it's almost like saying, well, if I'm going to learn something, I want to learn from the top professor you know, in the school, and I get to take on that role, which is very fun, because I, I just love to mentor young people. But then I also find almost like a rock band that is aging. You know, all of their fans have aged right along with them. So I, I get a lot of those clients too who are my age. And, and just as you're describing, I'm like, I'm right there with you, man. I've, I've gone through the same things. And so we get to talk on more of a camaraderie based level as well as that, that accountability and education. So I, I, I you know, it, may, it makes sense. You know, you, you're attracting women who, who want to be like you when you are that role model for them. But uh, you're right. We, uh, you know, we, we love working with, with anybody who can, who can learn from us. And you're, you're creating a, a coaching business and a platform that I think is going to succeed incredibly well just because you are that core person who's taking all of those principles and saying, hey, you know, I've done this. You can do it, too. Yeah, I mean, like, you know what the thing is, is like everybody has to start somewhere. Um, and uh, for me as a coach, one of the things I always like to keep in mind is, yeah, I'm on a lot of the Facebook pages. I still support a lot of the, the work at IFYM um, and help manage that and coach for them and, and everything. But um, one of the things is with that, it's a, it's a large community. And there's always new people coming into the pages that know nothing about tracking macros, who've struggled with diet for, for many, many years. And I always like to keep the perspective of we all started somewhere. So don't talk down to people. You know, a lot of people will be so mean and be like, well, don't you know how you search or don't, don't you know this? And a lot of people don't know. And that's completely okay. And I think that when we get too far into our careers and forget that people are new to it, then that's when we become arrogant and we stop being able to help people. And so I'm always keeping that mindset of what did I struggle with? I mean, like when the first time my, my um, coach put me on carb cycling and it was low carbs and I ate all my carbs for breakfast and I cried the rest of the day because I didn't <laughs> understand what I had to do and what adjustments. So we always have to keep in that mindset of like, People are new. And even if they've been doing this for a long time, they have built up all of these myths and biases and things like that that might not even be true at all. Um, so I think that we need to be able to educate from the perspective of like, have a good understanding of why something works. So a lot of times with nutrition, you know, people would give advice on like, if people are like, oh, I can't lose weight or whatever. And people are, you know, we're quick to say, oh, well do intermittent fasting, do carb cycling, you know, do this diet, do this. And it's like, okay, let's just break it down to the very basic. Why do these things work? It's not because you use one of these tools. It's because of that calorie deficiency. So, you know, I like to get to the place where I'm explaining the why rather than like, these are all just tools. These are strategies. And so I think that if you can break things down in an understanding of, hey, everybody starts somewhere, I think that you reach people um, more often and then just helping people. You've been helping people for such a long time with, you know, all of the podcasts and the videos and things like that, that, you know, I think that where you are today is very representative of the fact that you have given out so much free information because that's helping people. And we're not always looking, you know, we're not always looking for the dollar. You know, we're looking for how can we help people? How can we break down the myths, the biases, and all the information out there? Because one person's going to say, this is the way you build muscle. And the other person's going to say, this is. And then another person's going to say, this is the way you do nutrition. And then, so it's all very conflicting. And then you've got the money hungry grabbers that are like, keto diet and like detox and stuff like that. You know, these things that are restrictive and those are the ones that people jump on because they can lose, you know, 10 pounds in a week. And it's like, oh no. So we're working against, you know, some of that, that information that's out there and trying to just bring out good information to just general population because a lot of people speak, you know, with the evidence base, you know, we, 
we get to that like mindset of like, let's tell them all the good information. And some people just don't even learn that way. Um, and have a good understanding. So I listened to a friend's, um, she did like a myth busting thing. And I got on the, the conversation and I'm fully into the evidence base and everything. And she was doing like a presentation to just um, general population, but it was like uh, scientific, scientific, scientific. And I, I, gave, I was like, I love you, I love you, but um, who are the who is the audience you were trying to speak to because here you're talking about insulin resistance and all this stuff and i go you did like you're not talking to the audience so i think that you've got to really um figure out who your audience is and who you're trying to talk to and i'm not saying dumb it down but make it consumable um because if you want to use all these big words you know who you're talking to you're talking to other people that are following the evidence base. That's not who I'm talking to. I'm talking to the mom at home who has three children who's been trying to lose weight and who yo-yos for every year. Um, and so um, really focusing on who your client is and really speaking to them and, and making um, information available and consumable. I think that that's important. Yeah, you, you reminded me the very first position I had on, on a writing board, I was the science editor for a publishing company. And, and the, the editor-in-chief hired me it, because he said, I like the way you make it understandable for people. You're, you're the only writer we have with a, with a doctorate in nutrition, and yet you're the one who makes it the most fun and understandable. But I will say, it becomes a real discipline to hang on to that because after 20 or 30 years of doing that, I, I want to think that everybody now, like I've educated the entire planet and everybody wants to talk about these things that I'm interested in now. And like you said, there are new people down here who just need those first steps. So, so don't lose that, Tracy. That is an important skill and, and your clients will always appreciate it. But we're going to have all of your information in the show notes for people to contact you. But if somebody's just listening right now and needs the, the single best way to contact you, how can they find you? Um, I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter under Med3 Fitness. Um, okay. All of my social media platforms are all the same. Um, and my website is med3fitness.com. So right. that is how you can find me I'm on YouTube. Uh, so many places, um, but um, mostly I'm in the ifym.com Facebook pages, um, helping people out and um, just providing good information. Awesome. Tracy Canfield, thanks so much for being in Contest Prep University. I love uh, sharing with our audience how, how great of a coach you are and, and how people like you are out there, you know, truly in the trenches, just helping people understand this stuff. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I uh, am really excited and I uh, have enjoyed our conversation today. All right. And we'll see you guys all next time in Contest Prep University.